What's up everybody, Maddie Mo here, and today we'll be talking about Android. Android is such a powerful operating system. It has so many features built into it and so many cool configuration tools that most likely you're not using. Now today I'm gonna go over 10 tips and tricks that you can do to really maximize the use of your Android experience. So without any further delays, let's hop right into it. So the first awesome Android feature I want to talk about is the Android Device Manager. And basically what this allows you to do is track, ring, lock, and wipe your phone or tablet in the event that you lose, misplace it, or have it stolen. Now obviously, I hope none of you have to use this, but in the event that you do, at least you know that there's this feature available. Now here's the thing, by default you can only ring and locate your device with the Android Device Manager. But if you want to do the other things that I mentioned, such as lock and wipe your device, you have to enable a few functions. So in order to do this, go to your main system settings menu, scroll down to security, find the device administrators option and open it up to see what apps have been granted admin privileges on your phone or tablet. Checking the box next to Android device manager allows you to wipe and lock the device in addition to the ring and locate features. Now. If you lost your device, you're probably wondering how you locate it. Now there's two ways of doing this. The first way is using another Android device and downloading the app and then entering your Google credentials. And what will happen is it'll show you a map and where your device is located or was last located. Now the other option is if you don't have an extra Android device around, you can log in the web and use the Android Device Manager webpage to locate your device. From there you can see a map of where your phone is located and issue commands to nuke or just lock it. Now before you go ahead and start wiping your device, how about simply just calling it first to make sure it's not stuck between your couch or in the backseat of your car. The second awesome Android feature that you guys need to know about is the ability to speed up the overall user experience. And you can do this by setting your animations to warp speed. Now the first thing you need to do to enable this tweak is to go into your system settings again. So once you're into your system settings, navigate to about, then software information, click on more, and then double tap build number a bunch of times. And I mean literally a bunch of times. After a while, a message will pop up saying that you are a developer. Now feel proud of yourself whether you're a developer or not, don't worry, you're not going to mess anything up on your phone. All you're doing is enabling another menu to go to to set up this feature in order to speed up the whole process. So once that's enabled, go back to your system settings menu, scroll down to developer options, and you'll be able to see a few new features that you can play around with. Now once you're inside developer options, scroll down to drawing and find window animation skill, transition animation skill, and animator duration skill. Now these are all set to 1x by default. These animations are the eye candy you see when apps open and close, menus drop down, and more. They help cover up lag as the system catches up, but you don't really need slow settings on a fast device. Now you can set all of these to 0.5x for a more snappy interface experience. The third really cool feature is Smart Lock. And basically what it allows you to do is keep your phone unlocked in trusted places. So for those of you that are really big on security and use a pin or a pattern to lock your phone, what you can do is in certain locations that you visit, you can automatically have your phone not lock itself. So for example, if you add your house or your work office as a trusted location, every time you're in those locations, you don't have to enter a PIN or a password to get in your phone. It will automatically stay unlocked until you leave that specific location. As soon as you leave it, you will then need to use a PIN or pattern, depending on what you set up, to get back into your phone. This is really, really, really convenient because not everybody likes to enter their PIN or password all the time and when you're at home who really cares if your phone's unlocked because it's just you there or your, your trusted family members and it just makes your life a lot easier. Now in order to enable this you do need to have a pin or pattern set up and to do that you have to go into your settings menu, scroll down to privacy and then set up that pin or password. Once that's set up go back to the privacy menu again and then click on smart lock and then begin adding your trusted locations. And the way it does this is by GPS all you have to do is type in the address or just use the GPS at whatever location you're at, it'll automatically detect the location and add it as one of those trusted agents. Once this is done, every time you're at home, you'll no longer need to unlock or lock your device because it will stay unlocked all the time. 
Now, don't get me wrong, using a pattern or PIN is a good way to keep your device secure. It keeps out nosy people from getting access to your information. But what actually happens when you misplace or lose your device? And a good Samaritan finds it and wants to return it to you because they want to make sure that you get your device back. How is he or she supposed to find out who it belongs to if the device is locked? Well, good news. There's an option called Owner Info. And basically, what it allows you to do is type in some text so that you can notify the person who found your phone on where to return it. Now you can type in whatever you want, such as your email address, phone number, address, but you should at least have your email address and phone number in there to make it easy for the person who found your phone to return it to you. Now in order to enable this feature, all you have to do is go down to the security section of your phone, select owner info, and then enable it, and then type in whatever text you want to display on the lock screen. Like I mentioned previously, just make sure you have your at least your email address and phone number so that they can get a hold of you. The next awesome Android feature I want to talk about is the ability to monitor your own data. Why give the carriers a chance to charge you per megabyte after you've gone over your data limit? They charge so much money per megabyte and that's how they make a lot of money, especially with really, really low data caps. So the best way to do this is to monitor your own data usage yourself. So all you have to do is go into your system settings menu, click on the more heading, and then select the data usage menu. Now once you're inside, you have to do a few things. The first thing you want to do is set a cellular data limit by enabling the toggle, and then below that you want to set the date on when your actual data plan starts and then after that you're gonna have two horizontal lines that you need to set up as well the first one sets the data limit so this is what your your carrier gives you and that's what you want to make that limit below that is the warning this is when you want your device to let you know that you're about to approach the limit and that you should need to control your data usage so my suggestion is to set the warning a few hundred megabytes lower than the limit so this way you have a little bit of breathing room in case you have like a week left until your whole data usage resets. So with the last feature that I just mentioned, we're able to monitor our data usage. But if you're still in that same menu, you can do a few other things as well. Like for instance, restrict background data app by app. So what you can do is if you look down below the actual warning level, you're gonna see a bunch of apps listed. And those apps listed have the amount of data that they use on a day-to-day -day basis. The ones at the top are the most greedy apps on your device that consistently use data in the background. And what you can actually do is restrict the data on these apps. Now this this only works if you have a mobile plan. If you just use your device on Wi-Fi, this won't work, but you can actually disable the app from using data in the background when you're out and about. This is very, very convenient for people who are always on the go that have small data plans and don't want some of their apps eating up all their data. Next up is to have your device to always listen to you even when the screen is off. Provided your phone or tablet supports it, you can now give voice commands anytime even when your device display is off. The option to activate the feature is a bit buried. Head into your system settings, tap language and input, and then voice input. Then tap the gear icon next to enhance Google services and look for a line labeled OK Google detection. Tap it then tap the line labeled always on and follow the prompts to train the system to recognize your voice. Voice. While you're in that menu, think about whether you want voice commands to work even when your phone is locked with a pattern, pin, or password. If you do, tap the line labeled when locked before you exit out. Once you're all done, just say OK Google and your phone will start listening. You can then ask it a question or give it all sorts of commands and have it work for you whether it's in your hands or not. Another awesome thing you can do with Android devices is the ability to quickly transfer files between two Android devices. Now, of course, you can do this with Bluetooth and NFC, and Android Beam makes this a lot easier by tapping two devices together, but those types of transfers are usually pretty, pretty slow. Now, what you can do is take advantage of a protocol called Wi-Fi Direct, and this allows you to exchange two files between two Android devices really, really, really quickly. Now, there's no baked-in operating system feature that allows you to do this, but you can download an app that will. So, one app I recommend is called Superbeam, and it's probably the most powerful and it also happens to have a free version. Now to get a transfer going, you just share files between Superbeam or whatever app you've chosen to use and tap the phones. Once you've done that, Wi-Fi Direct enables itself and queues up multiple files in a single operation and then the transfer rate can easily exceed 30 megabits per second. It's really, really great for sharing large videos or images. 
Number nine is the ability to pin something to your device's screen. Look, we've all been there. Someone you need to know needs to borrow your phone for a quick second to make a call or look something up online. A new lollipop feature called screen pinning is designed to let you do those types of things without any hassle and without having to worry about the person getting into something they shouldn't. Take a moment now to enable it. Go into the main system settings, select security, scroll down to screen pinning and set it to on. Then take it for a test run. Tap the recent apps key, which is the square to the right of the home key and scroll up You'll see a push pin icon on the most recent app or process you had open. Tap it and then confirm that you want to pin that process. Your device is now locked to that one process, so if you hand it off to anyone, it's the only thing they'll be able to use. No returning to the home screen, no seeing notifications, and no opening up anything else on the device. Now, if you want to exit the pin mode, press the back and recent apps button at the same time. If you have a pin pattern or password set, which you should, if you want this feature to have much meaning, you'll need to enter it in order to return the device to its normal state. And finally, the last awesome Android feature I want to talk about is the ability to save some battery life. You can check out where all that juice is going by simply going to the settings menu, selecting battery, and then you'll be able to see an option called battery saver. On the battery screen, simply tap the three vertical dots in the top right and then choose battery saver to toggle it on. You can set it to automatically turn on at 5 or 15% if you want. It does kill unnecessary vibrations, limits performance, and stops background data. That means you may need to open apps like email to sync them. Moreover, the feature will automatically turn itself off when you plug your phone into a charger. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If any of those features helped you out or you didn't know about it, make sure you smash that like button. And if you have any Android tips and tricks that you want to add, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to see what you guys have to say. If you guys haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please go ahead and do so so you can see more awesome videos like this one. And I'll see everybody in the next episode.